In this video, I would like to briefly introduce the story of Berlin's Museum Island. Mostly with historical maps and pictures, I will first take a look at the time before the first museum, the Altes Museum, was even built. Then I come to the time when the all in all five museums were built. And finally, I tell you a little bit about what has happened on Museum Island in the past decades and what is to come in the future. The older maps that I'm going to use are not always as reliable as you would expect these days and North is not always up on them. Nevertheless, they still give a good impression of old Berlin. And so I now switch from the modern satellite view of this part of Berlin Mitte to a map that is supposed to show the same area towards the end of the Middle Ages. Here you can see the area of today's Museum Island and you can see there's nothing but swampland and it has been like that for a long time, probably since the last ice age, even at the time of the first mention of the two neighboring cities, Berlin and Köln, in the 13th century, this part of the island of Köln was probably hardly used or not used at all, and so it remained until the early modern period. After construction of the Berlin Palace, began in the central part of the island of Köln in the 15th century, people were probably interested in making use of the swamp meadows next to it. Thus, the first garden, the kitchen garden, was probably created at that time, but real development was not possible. That changed in the 16th century, especially when the river Spree was channeled through Kölnische Stadtgraben, which is today Kupfergraben. The area was partially drained, and so the Lustgarten, a pleasure garden, was created in the 17th century. The Pomeranzenhof, an orangery, was soon built there for the wintering of the sensitive plants and the pleasure garden. Later, when Berlin was surrounded by a fortress wall after the Thirty Years' War, the rear part of the island was separated by a canal and a new semicircular orangery was built there within the wall. Soon afterwards, the island port was used commercially. It sorted with the orangery. It was converted into a packhof, a packing yard, a kind of intermediate storage for merchandise. And there was more. Over time, for example, a wood market, a bathing establishment, a salt warehouse and a floor house were added. The fortress wall, which was actually obsolete during construction, was soon torn down again. The canal, which ran along today's Bodestrasse, was filled in again and there were even some individual residential buildings built on the island. Ultimately, however, almost all buildings in favour of the museums were demolished again at the latest by the end of the 19th century. But I don't want to jump that far in history yet. In the 18th and 19th century the population of Berlin continued to grow, as in many other cities, and with it the movement of goods. After all, the former orangery was too small for a packing yard. Karl Friedrich Schinkel, the Prussian master builder, not only known in Berlin today, therefore designed several new Packhof buildings, which were built between 1829 and 1831 along Kupfergraben. Since all goods that were handled in the packing yard were subject to tax control, the Hauptsteueramt, the main tax office, was also built at the same time on the island. Also during this time, namely between 1824 and 1830, the first museum was built, which brings me to the actual museum island. The building, now known as Altes Museum, old museum, was designed by Schinkel according to the design of Crown Prince Friedrich Wilhelm, who wanted something that looked antique. As with all large buildings on this part of the island, the still comparatively soft underground and the flowing water made construction difficult. Wooden piles were driven into the ground with great difficulty in order to create a stable building site 
similar to the example in Venice. With the then modern idea of publicly exhibiting private art collections, the Royal Collection of Paintings and Sculptures was initially housed here and the museum was called Königliches Museum, which means Royal Museum. Part of the Antikensammlung, the Berlin Antiquities Collection, was later exhibited here. The best known exhibit in this collection today is the Praying Boy, which dates from ancient Greece. The second museum on the island was the Neues Museum, the new museum. It was designed by Schinkel student Friedrich August Stühler and built between 1841 and 1855. Both, the old and the new museum, were connected above ground by a passage across the street, which was destroyed in 1945. This is particularly interesting because the archaeological promenade planned today is intended to create an underground connection between almost all of the buildings on Museum Island. The new museum is known worldwide and with it the entire Museum Island above all for an exhibit of the Egyptian Museum, the over 3,300 years old bust of Nefertiti. The third museum on the island was the Alte Nationalgalerie, Old National Gallery, for which the former Rangery building was demolished. The museum was also designed by Friedrich August Stühler, but after his death it was built under his student Johann Heinrich Strack until 1876. In the building, which is partly built like an ancient temple, paintings and sculptures are exhibited. One of the most interesting exhibits there is the painting in the Conservatory by Edouard Manet, probably made in 1877. The fourth museum is the Bode Museum, which is named after the founding director. It was built from 1896 to 94 at the end of the island. The architect was Ernst von Ina. The building is typical of large buildings from the time of the last German Emperor Wilhelm II. Since it was not only a museum, but also a monument to Emperor Friedrich III, the museum was initially called Kaiser Friedrich Museum. Today, for instance, the Münzkabinett, the famous numismatic collection, is housed here, where you can see coins up to about 2,700 years old. Yet, one is no longer here, namely the big maple leaf, one of the six one million Canadian dollar gold coins which weighs 220 pounds and was stolen here in 2017. The Pergamon Museum, as you know it today, was the fifth museum on the island. However, it is not the first Pergamon Museum. That was built on the island around the same time as the Border Museum. But it zacked a little on the bad ground, and maybe because it was too small for some, it was torn down again in 1908. Today's museum was built according to the design of the then famous architect Alfred Messel, but since he died before construction began, it was built from 1910 under the direction of Ludwig Hoffmann. However, some things were not built from Messel's model design, as can be seen here. The First World War and the resulting major economic problems even delayed the completion of the reduced version without the colonnades and the foreground and the fourth wing on the right front. The museum was only really completed in 1934, that is, more than 20 years after construction had begun. Today it is primarily known for the eponymous ancient Pergamon altar, but also for the Babylonian Ishtar gate. Now that Museum Island was somehow complete, and exhibited numerous examples of high culture, crimes against humanity were soon planned and administered just a few streets away. The Pleasure Garden, in front of the Altus Museum, was used again and again for Nazi propaganda events. However, World War II came back to the places of its planning with destructive force and thus the buildings on the Museum Island were also badly damaged. After the war, 
Berlin was divided and the Museum Island was now in the capital of former GDR, where they were partially not able to cope with the costs of the reconstruction. Therefore, for instance, the renovation of the ruins of the Neues Museum started 42 years after the end of the war, that is, in 1987. After the German reunification, the restructuring work was continued and expanded. However, there was partial dispute that continues to this day about the role Museum Island should play in Berlin and which structural changes should be made on the island. In 1999, the island was given the status of World Heritage Site, and in the same year, Master Plan was also decided. This plan includes the archaeological promenade, which is supposed to connect all museums which either are underground, except the old National Gallery. A new visitor centre was also created, based on plans by British architect David Chipperfield, the James Simon Gallery. This building, which opened in 2019, was, like the others, erected on a pile foundation with great difficulty and almost double the cost. In view of this, one could come to a charming conclusion and say, the former swamp area has shown itself in amazing changes for centuries. But you can also put it in a matter of fact way. The Museum Island is a typical piece of Berlin's architectural history.